but you're in here for a little bit and you can't realize you can't take the coat off and it doesn't feel so warm anymore. The drastic drop in temperatures means heating companies are very busy. Coming up, we'll tell you about some preventative measures that will keep your house warm. School was out today in Jessamine County, but the lessons continued at home. Here comes another Arctic blast to the Bluegrass State just in time to kick off the upcoming weekend. We'll have full details on the way. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 530. Good evening. We're finally seeing some sun in the bluegrass. Maybe that'll make you feel a little warmer, but many areas of the state started off the morning with below zero temperatures. Yeah, and although we will still get some relief from these frigid temperatures tonight, another Arctic blast is headed our way for the weekend. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is tracking that blast. And Chris, we keep saying relief, but I don't know if relief is maybe the greatest it, word for us to use. All, you know what? It's all relative. When you're talking about sub zero temperatures, technically anything is going to be better than that as long as the numbers are on the positive. Positive side, and we're not alone in getting a little better temperature regime out there this afternoon into the evening. Now, look at the entire region. Yeah, everybody is still very, very cold. We're just not as cold. Teens showing up across parts of Kentucky, still some single digits to our north. At 19 now into Richmond, Mount Sterling, Moorhead, and Frankfort. 16 Covington, Lexington at 18 degrees as of now. Thermometers, if anything, may rise a few degrees as we make our way into tonight. Now, with that temperature rise toward the low 20s, track a couple of things. Still some gusty winds that will keep the wind chill into the single digits all evening long. And we're also seeing those gusty winds introducing another round of cold, as Amber and Sam were just talking about. That is a cold front that is off to our northwest. Does have a couple of snow showers and flurries out ahead of that. Live first alert defender trying to get a few of those snowflakes into far northern Kentucky as of now. Anyone is going to be fair game for those flakes as we go into early tomorrow. Doesn't look like a big, big deal, guys, but when I come back in a little bit, we will track that Arctic front into your Friday and show you how that leads to a frigid. Friday night with the hour by hour forecast and negative wind chill numbers that show up again. That's coming up in less than 15 minutes. All right, we'll see you then, Chris. Thank you. And thanks to the frigid temperatures, many students in the bluegrass had the day off. But for some students, no school didn't mean no class. Jessamine County school leaders called a snow day. And as WKYT Sam Smith tells us, the school system is part of a state pilot program that brings the classroom home. He has our top story at 5 30. Great right, five words that describe you. It's kind of neat to see what they're actually doing because I'm not in the classroom with them. So. Today, Gina Weiner is a mother turned school teacher. So it's nice to know that I'm seeing, you know, the work that they're actually doing. And there was no school in Jessamine County, so for the first time this school year, a non traditional instruction day was called, which means every student is assigned a take home lesson. You want to do that one or do you want to do... The lessons are evergreen and are often reviews of what a student already learned. Nine more non-traditional days remain. These days do not need to be made up. It requires two hours a day for them to do that. If all the non-traditional days are used up, any future school cancellations will be made up at the end of the year. I was kind of glad we were out. I'd rather do work at home than have to... Sacrifice a day in my summer. Parents and students are not on their own. Teachers can be contacted by email throughout the day. Jessamine County can do this because they're a part of a state pilot program. If things go well, other districts could have a non traditional instruction plan of their own. And to be able to help your kids and enjoy a snow day, but also get that education thrown in there too. In Jessamine County, Sam Smith, WKYT. That was a busy household today. Twelve other school districts in the state have been approved to offer non-traditional instruction days this year. The extreme cold caused problems for some travelers this morning at Bluegrass Airport. A water line on a Delta plane froze. The airline spent hours trying to thaw it out. The plane should have taken off at 7.20 this morning, but it never left the gate. Passengers were allowed to get off the plane, and many of them were rebooked on other flights. With these bitterly cold temperatures, your heating system has to work extra hard to keep your house warm. And this means heating companies stay very busy during the winter. WKYT's Rebecca Smith has some advice from experts about how to make sure that your house stays warm during these winter months. Chilling out took on a whole new meaning for Jeannie Blanc this morning. But you're in here for a little bit and you can't realize you can't take your coat off and it doesn't feel so warm anymore. So she promptly called her local heater repairman. And this morning I didn't think they opened till eight, so I toughed it out and 
froze a little bit until 8 o'clock and then gave him a call. Went through a couple busy signals. but As for the timing of this, let's just say it wasn't the best. Now, obviously, it's the coldest temperatures of the year, and, and me trying to head out of town, it's, it's never a good thing when your heat's blowing cold air. She's one of many left out in the cold inside. You realize that it's not warm once you're out of bed, and something is absolutely not right. Stiver says taking simple steps to prevent problems like changing out your filter can save you money in the long run. I'd hate to think what someone's doing that doesn't have that sort of preventative, you know, that contract to the program that I'm on. I'm, I'm just very conservative, and so for me, it's better safe than sorry. Put a little money in, and, and they're here twice a year maintaining it. So I hope. That means that when I call, maybe I'm a priority. Cause I In Lexington, Rebecca Smith, WKYT. Well, experts tell us if you have a programmable thermostat, you should program a setting and stick to it. They say it's very difficult for heating units to make dramatic increases in temperatures when it's this cold. And stay with WKYT for continuing coverage of this Arctic blast. You can always find updated closings, delays, and weather information on WKYT.com. A teenager who admitted to shooting and killing his half-brother will not spend time in prison for the boy's death. A Fayette Circuit judge gave 18-year-old Eric Trigg five years of probation today. He will have to serve four years in prison if he doesn't follow the terms of his probation. Trigg pled guilty last year to reckless homicide for the death of 16-year-old Isavion Lindsay. Some family members have said the shooting was accidental. A second woman is behind bars in connection with the violent shoplifting. Our county by county coverage begins in Madison County. 34 year old Melinda Osborne of Berea faces robbery charges. Police arrested Jackie Isaacs last month. This comes after police say the two women took items from a Kohl's last month and left the store without paying for nearly $1,000 worth of merchandise. When a store employee attempted to stop the two women in the parking lot, police say Isaacs hit the employee several times. Osborne is in the Madison County Detention Center. And in Whitley County, investigators need your help tracking down two theft suspects. The Whitley County Sheriff wants anyone with information about the owner or people inside this truck to call them. They say someone stole two heating and air units and two winches and a copper line set on Christmas Eve. They're hoping these pictures will lead them to the thieves. We certainly have a lot of company when it comes to this cold weather. Most of this country is covered up in a deep freeze. Our good question on this very cold January day. What is driving this Arctic blast into the U.S., and why is it so powerful? Well, I've asked for our expert here, Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey, to help us out. And, Chris, uh, this thing is a monster of an Arctic blast. Where's it coming from? Yeah, it really is, Sam. We look at our map here, and this air, believe it or not, the high pressure pushing this Arctic outbreak into the country originated on the other side of the North Pole into Siberia. That's often how we get some of the coldest air uh, on record in North America. It comes from the other side of the pole. Now that followed the jet stream, which took a big dip and is still taking a big dip into parts of the deep south. Now, pushing bitterly cold air, Sam, not only to Kentucky, but into areas of the deep south. I wanted to show you this map because it's something you don't see very often. This yeah. is what we had at 7 o'clock this morning. It was 13 below for a wind chill in Lexington. Look at Atlanta. It was minus one for a wind chill. How about 14 degrees on Bourbon Street this morning for a wind chill? Mickey Mouse, 30, <laughs> 31 degree wind chill in Orlando. That is brutal by Orlando standards, as you know. Why is this so powerful? We had that big high pressure across parts of the Plain State, Sam. That was uh, some of the highest recorded pressures on record in the United States. You had that pressure at uh, to one point at 1,060 millibars, which is just off the charts. And again, the air underneath that was coming from Siberia all the way across the North Pole and now into the Gulf of Mexico. That's a rare feat. A balmy 56 in Miami. They can enjoy <laughs> That's that. That's right. Thanks, Somewhere. Chris. Amber? Still to come here on WKYT, students in Pulaski County headed to school today despite the cold. We'll tell you about a new hands on science program that's preparing students for the future. I'm Bill Bryant. Governor Bashir delivers an upbeat State of the Commonwealth address and lays out an agenda for lawmakers. And a school system pushes its superintendent out in the middle of the year. The bottom line is ahead. I'm Victor Puente in Fayette County, where they were one of dozens of school systems who canceled classes. But the way they did it has led to an apology. You'll hear it coming up at 6.